All right, so it's time to introduce the final major theorem in vector calculus, which is Stokes' theorem. Um, so the setup for Stokes' theorem is as follows. You've got some surface. Let me sketch this out. And now we're dealing, it's not a closed surface like in the case of the divergence theorem, right? Um, so this time the surface is not the boundary. The surface will have a boundary. So we have some kind of surface, right? And it's got a boundary, something like this, okay? So S is going to be some smooth or at least piecewise smooth oriented surface. Okay, so let me grab a color here. So we have a choice of orientation. Let's say, let's say it's oriented this way. Okay, something like that. The next thing we have is we've got a curve C. C is going to be the boundary of our surface, right? So our surface has boundary. So C is going to be the positively oriented boundary. Okay, and so we might write uh, we might write C as like this ds for the boundary. Um, so the the positive orientation is a little bit tricky. Um, it's one of these kind of right hand rules, left hand rules, however you want to think about it. Um, so the the way you get the orientation is you imagine yourself standing on the side of the surface. Um, Correspond to the normal vector, so your head's pointing in the same direction as the normal vector. And you want to walk around the curve so that the surface is on your left, right? So your left hand is over the surface, your right hand is off into space. Um, so in the picture I've drawn here, that would have us going around that way, okay? This way around the curve um, would be the positively oriented boundary, All right? Of course, if you if you reverse the orientation for the surface, you need to also reverse the orientation for the boundary curve. Um, the two of them are kind of connected together. And the last ingredient for Stokes' theorem is you need a vector field. So you gotta have a continuously differentiable vector field. And again, it should be, it should be continuously differentiable everywhere on the surface, right? Um, so with these ingredients, Stokes' theorem says the following. Stokes' theorem says that the integral around C of f dot dr, right? So remember this line integral is the same thing as the integral over the surface S of the curl. Okay, so this is Stokes' theorem. Um, for closed curves, this, this line integral has a name. This is referred to, we've mentioned this before, this is referred to as the circulation of F. Um, and so one of the ways that you can understand Stokes' theorem, um, similar, similar to the divergence theorem, one of the things that you can do is you can talk about circulation around a point. Um, well, you, I guess you need... So you have a point, and at that point, you choose a particular normal direction, something like this. And then in the plane that has that normal vector, you kind of, you do a little closed curve going around the point. Okay, um, you could do a circle. Uh, with a rectangle, actually, if you went through the details, which we're not, it takes too long. I've got about 10 minutes of recording time left. Um, with, a, with a rectangle, you can actually kind of plug the various sides of the rectangle in, you know, do the parametrization, and you can start seeing the different components of the curl popping up, right? You can see, like, 
the dq dx minus dp dy, right? Or maybe it's going to be like delta q over delta x. You see them popping up, right? So, so basically what you can do is if you take, if you take this circulation, all right, you divide by the area of the little rectangle, right? Um, or or you know, maybe you divide by the area over here, whichever place you want to put it. Um, and then you kind of take a limit as that rectangle shrinks down to the point. And, and what you get is exactly the curl at that point, right? So the curl gives you this measure of circulation, as we said, this tendency for the vector field to kind of move things around, to spin things around. Um, so we've seen that already, right? Um, okay, so that's the statement of Stokes' theorem. And the way, you know, there's a couple of ways that you're gonna see it used, right? Um, typically, you see it given in one of two ways, right? One is, you're, you're asked to do a particular line integral for some vector field, and it doesn't look particularly pleasant either because the vector field is complicated or maybe the curve is difficult to parameterize. Um, and so, but you realize it's a closed curve. So if it's a closed curve, it bounds the surface, right? Um, and then you can say, okay, let's compute the curl, because maybe the curl is simple, right? So if you get lucky, the curl is, is simple, um, or at least simpler than the original one, right? You might have some derivatives that go to zero. Um, and the surface integral might be easier to compute, right? Um, one of the cases where you'd want to replace the line integral by the surface integral might be if your curve is sort of piecewise smooth with several components, right? Like you want to integrate around a square or something, right? Maybe you'd rather integrate over here. It might be easier. Um, on the other hand, you know, you might have a surface integral where you happen to know that your vector field is a curl and you realize that it's going to be difficult to set this up because the surface is complicated, difficult to parameterize. Um, then maybe you want to move over to the boundary, right? Of course, the only, the only downside is this: this is only going to work if you know the vector field is a curl, right? If you don't know it's a curl, th there's nothing you can do with that, right? Um, if it is a curl, you might, be, you might find it beneficial to move over here and work with the line integral. Um, sometimes it's also beneficial to actually move to a second surface that has the same boundary but is simpler, right? Um, so in this case here, maybe this, this bottom piece, right, well, that's not part of our surface, but there's a disk there that has that same boundary circle. Maybe you'd rather integrate over the disk than, than the surface, right? Um, and so you can actually apply Stokes' theorem twice, you know, replacing this surface with a simpler surface and you do the surface integral over there. Um, so you have options like that. Um, one, other, uh, one other thing to remark before we uh, stop this and, and set up an example. Remember that um, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that line integrals shouldn't depend on path if you're integrating a gradient. In particular, uh, if you integrate a gradient around any loop, you should get zero. Um, you can see that here in Stokes' theorem because if f is a gradient and you're integrating around a loop, well, then that loop probably bounds a surface, uh, but we know that the curl of any gradient is zero, and so we know that this side is zero, and that tells us that this side is zero. So um, you, can see, you can see these things fitting together, right? All these theorems, they fit together. Um, the fundamental theorem for line integrals kind of fits with Stokes' theorem. Stokes' theorem fits with the divergence theorem because it might happen that, you know, Again, if you, if you put on that disk, right, now you have a closed surface, you can put the two surfaces together. Um, divergence of a curl is also zero. Um, so another way to understand why those two surface integrals are the same um, is that those two surfaces bound a region where the, where the divergence is zero. Um, and, and so you can make that argument, just like we did in, uh, in the last video when we did Gauss's Law. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave this here. Uh, we'll stop the video, we'll set up an example. We'll come back, we'll take care of that example.